Hey guys, NerdKing101 here, and I just wanted to quickly go over my thoughts on Young Justice Season 3, Young Justice Outsiders, or at least what we've seen so far, which is the first 11 episodes of Season 3, Young Justice Outsiders. I would like to apologize for the lack of real editing in this video, but I've heard really bad things about people dealing with copyright issues with using Young Justice footage, and I've been dealing with a lot of problems for some Ava videos lately involving copyright, and I'm honestly just not in the mood to deal with all the problems that may come with using Young Justice this footage so you're just getting pictures i'm sorry but there's nothing i can really do about it it's just not worth the trouble but yeah i've been excited and hyped about this season since it was announced and rightfully so because this season of young justice or at least the first half of it the first 11 episodes were really good for those that don't know, they are going on break while DC Universe releases the Doom Patrol series and then around sometime in June that will end and we will get the rest of season 3. Hopefully if this does well and people watch it, we will get more Nun Justice. But I personally have a feeling it's going to be a lot like the comic books where people are going to whine and complain, we want blank books. People will complain we want a Batman Beyond book, and then nobody will buy the book, and then you'll be upset when it gets cancelled. But who knows, maybe I'm wrong, maybe people will watch and support the hell out of this. I do think putting it on DC Universe exclusively was a mistake, because for example, the first week that the season started, I was away on vacation in Jamaica, and while I was having a great time, it was Friday morning and I wasn't ready to do anything yet. I went online and I couldn't get on the DC Universe website to watch it because I wasn't in the United States. So yeah, this is the problem. If you're not in certain parts of the world, then you're gonna have to pirate it. There's also the fact that not everybody can afford a streaming service just to watch one or two shows. But I digress, that's not really what this video is about. I just want to ramble and talk for a bit about how much I love this season. First of all, I want to talk about the thing that I think from a technical level impressed me the most, which was the Terra stuff. Because honestly, it's so easy to go with a general version of the Judas Contract storyline, which isn't what they're doing. It would have been very easy to just do the Judas Contract, but with Young Justice instead of the Teen Titan. But they're doing something completely different, making Terra a princess of Markovia, giving her this brother who is trying to save her, and making her really manipulative. Like, Terra's always been a manipulative bitch, but she's really bad in this. Like, she had this older brother who loves her to death, and it's revealed at the end of the season that she is using this guy. She is manipulating him to get on to, to get onto the team and get into the injustice, and it's really, really different. Because it adds, her having a brother in the form of Brion adds a whole nother level of emotional investment to this storyline that wouldn't have really worked nearly as well if the audience didn't have an emotional connection to Brion. Brion or Geoforce is also really fun. I really like what they do with him being this exiled prince who was exiled by his brother after he fought his uncle after they both awakened their metagenes illegally and now his country Markovia had put a ban on metahumans. It's just it's all really fascinating. I also really enjoy how they're using the concept of metahumans as almost like the DC Universe's version of mutants. I think it's cool and I don't think they've ever done this in the comics. My DC knowledge is extensive but it's not very extensive. You'll have to let me know if this is something they've done in before in the comics. But I'm pretty sure this is completely original. Um, I really enjoy Violet. I think she's really fascinating. A lot of the characters in this season that were introduced, I actually thought were original characters. Like, I had no idea these people existed. Violet is really, really cool. Like, she's awesome. I love Violet. I like how she keeps discovering new power as the theory goes on, and she get more and more powerful and cooler and cooler with each new power. Like, this woman can just open a boom tube. 
Like she can just open boom to with her mind. Only Cyborg should be able to do that. Oh my god. Cyborg. The introduction to Cyborg in this season is the best animated. I never thought I would actually see an animated version of Cyborg's origin that was this good. I mean, you see his body blown off. You see him like missing limbs or blood everywhere. The fact that they are no longer restricted by TV ratings in this season is very clear. And they really use it to make a really good looking dark show. A lot like the new season, the fifth season of Samurai Jack. It is not excessive. There is not any blood or gore or sex that isn't needed. In fact, there is no sex at all. They just have more mature humor. There's a couple more mature jokes. An example, of course, being the line when Nightwing says that the name Tigress sounds like a stripper name. It's just they're able to work in jokes that work. Because these are older characters in like their early 20s that would make sexual jokes and would joke around and be a little dirty. So it's nice getting to see these characters actually after age with a little bit of language which is nice. Of course, it was very shocking when we saw the blood for the first time in the very beginning. Yet I real, I guess I realized subconsciously that they didn't need to adhere to like TV ratings anymore. So I didn't actually think about it. I wasn't actually prepare myself for it. So when I saw the king and queen of Markovia die, and I saw the blood all over the bed, I was like, whoa! I was blown away. It was so cool. But I mean, the scene. When a Violet gets like her face burned off, that was like, wow. And then of course there's the cyborg scene, which I actually paused while watching and I was like, wow, this is good. I also really like the scene in the first episode when Batman and the Justice League are discussing what to do because Lex Luthor from within the UN had been like restricting the Justice League. And it's very interesting. Yeah, people have made the Captain America Civil War co comparison before, and yeah, this is basically what Captain America was saying in Civil War, and it proves why Captain America was right in that movie. Because basically, the Justice League is under the control of the UN, and now the UN is being manipulated. Somebody like Les Luthor worked their way in, because in the first two seasons of the show, the Justice League had a great relationship with the UN, and the UN kind of let them do whatever because they trusted the League. But now Les Luthor had worked his way in and using the UN to construct and control the League, and now they're not even allowed to go into other countries during a natural disaster and work humanitarian efforts. They're not allowed to do their job as heroes and save people. Because the UN is telling them, you can't go there and do your and save people. You can't go there and do a good deed. So Batman is like, listen, if the Justice League is, be, is controlled by the UN and the UN is constricting us, then let's just not be the Justice League anymore. I'm leaving. And him and him and a couple other people and all the Bat family members leave. I particularly enjoy the thing when Cassie, aka Wonder Girl, is is holding Tim's hand because they, her, her and Tim Drake are in a romantic relationship, which I believe is a thing in the comic. But they're dating, and she's like, Tim, what the hell? And what are you doing? He's like, come with me. She's like, come with you. What, what are you talking? No. And he's like, okay, and you're not coming with me. Bye. It's a very Batman thing to do, to be like, listen, lady, you can get in line and do as I say and come with me, or we're, we're not going to be together, but I'm not doing this. Bye. I, I, I'm doing what's right, and he leaves. So I really like that scene. It's very subtle. I do also like, though, how she just shouts out, Tim! It's just like, well, I guess everybody knows who Red Robin is now. Like, master-like student, Wonder Woman offers them the same thing during the Justice League meeting, and shouts out for everybody to hear, Bruce! And while I understand that the core founding members, like Wonder Woman, Green Lantern, Flash, like all of them, Superman, while well, they know who Bruce is, I would be very surprised, just based on Batman's paranoid and secretive character, if people like Shazam knew who he was. Because in the second, in the, in the first season, like, not everybody knew that Shazam was Billy Batson. Like, 
Nobody knew that Captain Marvel fell through the hand of Billy Batson. So at this point, I'm just going to assume that not everybody knows who Batman is and Wonder Woman just told them. Because if Shazam can keep who he is a secret, then Batman definitely would. In the first season of the series, actually, the only people on the team who knew who Batman was was Dick Grayson, Robin, and Wally West. I also love how Cyborg wants no part of it. Like, Cyborg is just some teenager who was playing a game for high school, like a football game, came home, had an argument with his dad in his lab, got really badly injured, got turned into a cyborg monster, and then ended up hanging out with the kids that are part of this team, and hanging around Dick Grayson. I also really enjoy how Dick Grayson is always telling Brion to be, or Geoforce to be patient, and how he slowly builds up, because he isn't given any update, which is a very Batman thing to do, just be like, do this, like, do as I say, I know what I'm doing, and then to not give people information in a fact that they can fly, but eventually Brion is just like, dude, like you're always telling me to be patient. I also did enjoy the relationship that they slowly built up between Brion and Violet. I thought that was nice, because it wasn't like this romantic thing that was right in your face. I honestly didn't even notice that they were doing it, because it was done so subtly and so well in the background. Like, it was just kind of this natural thing that occurred. And then by the end of the season, they were kissing, and I was like, oh, that happened. For most of the season, I was like, is this supposed to be just really good friendship? Or is it supposed to be romantic? Honestly, it was so subtle, I couldn't even tell. It was supposed to be romantic or not. And then they kissed, got together, and then I was like, okay, I guess it was supposed to be romantic. That was really nice. You know, the problem with the romance in a lot of these shows is a lot of the time it's really in your face and there's love triangles and it just takes away from the main story and it's annoying. This book was really subtle and it really worked. I also enjoyed that we get to see more of a development with the uh, Connor Kent, Snipper Boy, and Miss Marching relationship. Which is something I always liked, although I've always thought that was really interesting. Of course, in the very beginning of the season, Superboy proposes to Miss Martin. He asks her to marry him. And then Miss Martin is, of course, like any same person. It's like, oh, this is going to be great. We can spend time together. We're going to get married. It's just going to be the two of us. And then Nightwing, and then he, Superboy goes on one mission. He, he really is just doing Dick Grayson a favor because he's not, he's not really a member of the team. Like, he doesn't really work with the team that... Miss Martian is the leader of the team of, like, Young Justice. He's not really on it, but he gets contacted by Dick Race and Nightwing. And he's like, I'll help you out. And he ends up help, and he ends up taking in a ton of kids. And he just keeps on growing and growing. And it's great. One of my favorite scenes. One of my favorite jokes is when they're having that little mini argument. And Miss Martian's like, I'm your fiancé. Like, I'm going to be your wife. And since you proposed, we have not spent any time alone together. And she's like, we need a date night. With the same time, she's like, we need a date night. She was like, we need a secret face. And I thought that joke was great. I don't know what it is. I think it was just the fact that it was just Superboy immediately jumps to like secret base of solitude. Like Superman, what he's like. He, and this part is like, no, we don't need a secret, what? No, we don't need a secret face, I mean, we need to go on a date. <laughs> just for two of us, he's like, are you insane? Where would we even get a secret face? It's great. I also kind of enjoy how we had like the hitting room in the house, and he's like, this is my own for solitude. I like that, because he doesn't have one. One of the only things that I strongly disliked about the the couple last of episode was their death part. Where, Rob, where uh, all the leaders of all the different teams and groups are meeting in the back cave. And what Diana said to Brooke, like, aren't you prepared to lie under oath? Like, aren't you prepared to lie to the UN? And I'm just looking at her and I'm like, I understand that because she's a diplomat from Samascara, she doesn't need to lie. Like, she has diplomatic immunity, so she doesn't really need to lie. She can just choose not to answer. But I mean... Batman is a crazy psycho. Okay, let's just establish who, who she's talking to. She's talking to a man that, is, that had his parents murdered in front of him when he was eight years old and decided to, that his coping mechanism would be to dress up like a bat 
and beat the shit out of people in the middle of the night. And she is looking at the crazy guy and saying, would you lie under oath? Batman lies to people about who he is every day. Batman is a manipulative, secretive liar. Like, I understand, the, the, the question would make sense if she was having a conversation with, like, Superman. But everybody in that room basically has a secret identity. Superman really doesn't have a secret identity. Superman has another identity, a civilian identity that he uses. But if you're honest about it, nobody ever looks at Superman and goes, I wonder who Superman really is. Because Superman doesn't wear a mask. He doesn't hide his identity. He flies around, he's like, yes, I am Superman, my name is Kal-El, and I'm from Krypton. Because, like, Superman is basically a god. Like, he's the most powerful being on the planet. They write him out of the show. They wrote Superman. Superman's on another planet. And there's, a, there's that great conversation between McGann, Miss Martian, and Superboy, when she said, like, I understand you're stressed out, and you feel the need to step up, because he is the Kryptonian on the planet. He's... He's one of the most powerful beings on the planet now because his because of Superman is gone. But they like they had to write him off the planet. They had to get him in a to get him away. Because Superman's that powerful. He's that good. He would also not in any way tolerate what Batman, Wonder Woman, and the others are doing. He just wouldn't tolerate it. He'd be like, no, we don't do this. But that's the whole thing. Like if she was having a conversation with Superman who goes around open about what he is and where he comes from, like nobody thinks Superman has a secret identity. He does have an identity, a civilian human identity, but nobody, Les Luthor doesn't sit around like, I wonder who Superman really is. What, what are they gonna do? Attack him? Like who cares who Superman is? He's, he's Superman. So it doesn't matter. In that case, but she, it's one of them was talking to him, I would get it, but she's talking to Batman, who is a manipulative, secretive person that would totally lie under oath. Would Batman lie under oath? Totally! Of course Batman would lie under oath. He's Batman. Another thing I would like to give this season, going back to the Terra thing I was talking about earlier, is that they do the introduction of Terra in the, the early episode when she kills the person while she's being controlled with the, with the giant boulder. They introduced her in a way that I, I thought to myself, is that Terra? You know, I, I always, I think they, they established that her name, who it is Terra, but I, I didn't make the connection. They do it so subtly that I didn't make, that I didn't immediately, it wasn't an easy connection to make because a lot of the things in this season are, a lot of stuff in this show is very subtle and should be obvious. Like, it should be obvious, it should be easy to put together. But there's a, the, prin, a, the princess of Markovia is named Terra Markov. Terra Markov was kidnapped by metahuman traffickers at a young age. She's a young girl and her name is Terra and she's a metahuman. And then there's this person that is going around with rock powers and smashing people with big boulders that had to have a feminine figure. Like I should put this together. But they did it in a way where I didn't even realize until later on. I'm like, oh damn, that was Tara. And with Tara. I also enjoyed the stuff with Vandal Savage. I thought the that story was interesting. I do have to admit it went on a little bit too long. I did like the Easter eggs though. Like how one of the people related to Vandal Savage was the original Dr. Fate, I believe. At least they had the Dr. Fate helmet. There was cool stuff like that, but overall, it could have been done better. It, just, it felt a little dragged out in the way the episode was structured. It just made me kind of go, oh, get to it. Because they had the present plotline and the previous plotline, and I honestly, I don't have enough of a connection with any of the characters to care about both, so that I didn't like. I also could have done, as I mentioned earlier, Superman with like, written off world. I could have done with more with what Superman is doing, only because of the fact that he's like arguably like one of the most powerful beings in the universe. Like we've never really seen Superman hardcore fight in the Unjustice, but he's one of the most powerful beings in the universe. He's Superman, so it would have been nice to know what Superman was like. What could possibly be keeping Superman so busy? He can't pop in to check on Lois, and surprise, guess what else we get? I mean, there's that scene where all the mothers are hanging out at that, like, meta-human center for children. All, all of the mothers of meta-humans 
of the meta humans and meta are coming over to help some of the other members of the team with the meta human kid because because their parents they have been very crazy meta human children. So a lot of the mothers that have the a lot of the mothers of meta humans that have the civilian mothers of meta humans are coming to help out. And you have people like, oh please job is get Jonathan Kent. And I'm like, wait, 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 you're telling me Superman has low has a wife and a child. Lois and Jonathan are a thing in this universe now. And he doesn't pop in like every day to check on them. He's Superman. You affect me and believe no matter where he is in the universe, he couldn't be back in five minutes to have dinner with his son and wife every day. He's Superman. He could be in another dimension and he could just run run so fast he'd pop back and be an Earth in second. So that was a little weird. It's not really something I don't like or a criticism or anything. I'm just looking at it like, what is Superman doing? Why won't you tell us what the strongest being in the universe is up to? It's a little bizarre. Like, I'm like, there's no way we're not going to get Superman vs. Darkseid, right? Like, you're, you're not expecting me to believe, like, the team can beat Darkseid without Superman. Unless they make Superboy stronger, I'm like, and, or make Darkseid weaker, I'm like, they're not gonna beat Darkseid. You can't defeat Darkseid without, like, a Kryptonian. Maybe they could introduce Supergirl and she could do it? I'm not really sure. I also enjoyed the stuff with Beast Boy. I thought all that was really good. There's nothing particularly about it that I liked. But time for one thing. I do want to talk about one thing. Doom Patrol Go was one of the funniest things I've ever seen in my life. That is probably the hardest I've laughed in a really long time. When the song started and they started going D O O M Patrol Go, when they started spelling it out and they started doing the song, I started laughing hysterically. It was so good. That was fantastic. That was so great. But something I want to briefly talk about, and this isn't really this season, it's just the show overall, but it respects its audience, like it really does. It doesn't over explain things, it doesn't go into great detail, because there's a lot of stuff in here and you're not, not everybody gonna get if you don't know these characters. But it assumes the audience watching a show at this point in this deep in the third season know the characters and will be a or at least knows enough about the DC universe and the comics and all the other media they've all been presented in to be able to follow this story. So they are over explaining like Lois Lane goes up with Jonathan Kent. They say they and they there's no acknowledgement. Lois Lane has a kid. You have to figure out that it's Jonathan. It's just really nice not to have everything spelled out for you. Like I saw that and me being a fan of Jonathan Kent and the Superman comments, especially the stuff prior to Brian Michael Bendis taking over. So all Jonathan. I also love Super Super Sons. Oh my god. I'm planning on marathoning that. They're reading through the whole thing. I love Super Sons. But uh when I saw Jonathan Kent, I was like, yes! Yes! Do another season, do like an eight-year time skip, and give me Jonathan Kent and Connor Kent teaming up and, have, and making him like, an, like a cool aunt, uncle relationship with Miss Martian and Superboy or something. Oh my god, give me Jonathan Kent and Damian Wayne! Damien way to get it. We saw Damien. I'm like, yes, because I love Jonathan Ken and Damien together. If we can get them together in this, that would be great. There's also a lose to Jason Todd, which I originally thought Jason Todd didn't exist in the Young Justice universe because obviously in season one and two on television, they couldn't really do the whole Joker kidnapped a 14 year old boy and beats him to death with a crowbar and then blows him up in an abandoned warehouse and then his body is stolen by Rachel Ghoul, put in a magic pool and then he is brought back from the dead. They couldn't really do that on a children's network like Cartoon Network but now they can and Jason Todd is back. You can just see him briefly in the League of the Shadows episode when you see Damien at least I think that's Jason Todd. If that's not Jason Todd, well, damn, I'm a fool. But, uh, yeah, no, I'm super excited for all that. This season was just really good, and I just wanted to ramble about it for, like, 40 minutes. Well, I was only in 24 minutes, but whatever. But I wanted to ramble about it. 10 out of 10, like, I don't really have any problem with it besides the Batman stuff. Obviously, this is only half the season, so I'm not even sure how I'm going to title this. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Tell me what you thought of the first 
11 episodes of Season 3 of The Unjustice in the comment section down below. I'll have a more official review, probably with editing and all of that. When the season's over, I'll probably do like a live stream just overall, and then I'll do like an official review when that's over. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, leave it a like, subscribe, tell me your thoughts on the season in the comment section down below. Hello, else, guys. Have a great day. Once again, I'm sorry for the editing. I just don't want to deal with the footage nonsense right now, the copyright nonsense. So yeah, have a great day. This is Nerd King 101 signing out.